So incorporating feedback and iterating on games are essential in the development process. This lesson is all about em emphasizing the importance of collecting feedback and playtesting and really having a think and analyzing this feedback to identify some themes or issues or areas for improvement in the game and refine that process. The concept of playtesting is so important when it comes to tabletop games or any game for that matter because you don't really know how such a dynamic environment is going to play out until you have players in there that didn't design the rules. This is an iterative process which means you do it bit by bit and improve it then do it again, ensuring that the game meets its intended goals and objectives and provides meaningful and immersive experience for the players. The best way to play test, I think, is to just run people through a dry run of the scenario. If you have enough time, actually play through the scenario. And the feedback and data you want to get out of it, you can think about beforehand. So you might do it through just a debrief session and informal communication, or it might be on a certain feedback form where you have particular things that you're interested in. Now these things that you're interested in getting some feedback on might be the game mechanics, or the player personas and characters, the scenario or the narrative, or just generally the overall experience. And you have to remember, constructive criticism is encouraged. This is where you get better, to pinpoint things that you didn't think about and areas that could be enhanced or refined for the real thing. Really embracing the idea of playtesting is core to making really quality stuff. And I like to use it as a bit of a life metaphor as well. Taking feedback can sometimes be really hard. And whenever I get feedback personally, or if someone has a something to say about what I've done or produced. Try and think about that feedback as just playtesting yourself. When you're having a look at feedback, you want to identify patterns. Not just one person's kind of opinion or input. That can take a little bit of skill. If someone says, oh, I don't like the art, that may be true. The art might suck, but it also just might be their opinion. Try to focus your playtesting on anything that supports the aim and objective as well as the player experience. Feedback in professional tabletop exercises might actually be required from subject matter experts to make adjustments, especially if you're doing games that have themes with concepts that you're unfamiliar with or are on topics that you don't know very well. And that might involve modifying some rules, tweaking some scenarios or narrative, or altering the mechanics to address the feedback. Multiple feedback sessions and Multiple playtesting sessions are usually required, especially if it's a professional game and people are expecting it to be really good. You just have to look on the inside label of any game you own and see how many playtesters are listed there to know how important playtesting is. You also want to know that the changes you made in the previous time you did a playtest have worked and not gone backwards. You want to ensure that the game aligns closer to the objectives. Maintaining records of playtesting sessions and feedback forms and changes you made is really useful. I couldn't recommend it higher because it means you can roll back versions of your game if you wish. Don't just have one living form, have multiple versions. And you can start to get a bit more experience and know what works and what doesn't. Ultimately, good feedback and iterative playtesting comes down to two things. Actually doing it and being okay with taking criticism. If you can, organize and run playtesting and take the feedback on board and do it more than once, you're going to generate really good quality games. Thanks for watching. These lessons will be dropping weekly on YouTube, but if you want to get them all right now, you can take the foundation course for free on our website, where you will also get the lesson notes, summaries, assignments, checklists that guide you through all the learning objectives we've covered. At the end of that course, you'll also get a certificate of completion and an invite to our directory and community where you can meet some other game masters and use the Long Game Project as a platform to showcase your work. If you want to take your game mastery further, completion of this course is a prerequisite to unlock the advanced professional course along with the game master track where we dive deeper into the content and further along the skill tree. You can also check out some of our other free tools in the description below, including our tabletop exercise starter kit, our scenario generator, the trove of existing scenarios, our SOP checklist library, oh, and our new RPG character sheet CV and LinkedIn template, which is really cool. I did mine this morning, and now all my network knows that my dump stat is probably Dex, 
and I'm definitely neutral good. Roll on.